Hi guys, this is another video continuing the series where we have a little bit of a closer look at some of the training sessions that I've had recently uh, and I'll give you a few insights into the things that I'm working on. This is a session that I had with Phil Bowen a few weeks ago. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have had a few practice sessions with Phil recently. He's an excellent player, uh, he's a very very good coach, uh, he's very knowledgeable so he's passed on some really good uh, sort of hints and tips. So this is a fairly standard warm up to the session whereby I'm just hitting a few forehand drives here and um, getting a feel for the ball, getting a feel for the, uh, the table and the, uh, the facilities. Flixton Cricket Club is uh, it's, it's an excellent venue actually, we've had some work done recently where they, they knocked a wall through and they made two rooms into one large room. We've also got some gear floor down that you can see there as well, the red gear floor with the like, dark grey uh, walls, so it looks absolutely fantastic. So this is uh, a development now of the drive, this is a much more aggressive drive, um, almost in between uh, like a loop and just a standard four and drive. One of the main things that I'm trying to work on here is taking the ball a lot earlier and actually trying to go through it a little bit flatter. Um, I definitely have a tendency to let the ball drop and then spin it up, which is a very, very good shot, but it just gives the opponent a little bit longer to get ready for the next shot. So I'm trying to take it a little bit earlier, keep the bat nice and high and then drive through it uh, very aggressively. So this drill here is uh, quite an interesting one, it's very simple, it's just starting off with backspin serve, stepping in and pushing, then getting back out very quickly. Again you can see I'm almost exaggerating it a little bit but after the push and as I move back I'm keeping the back quite high. Again it's just to, to try and get myself out of this tendency of dropping the bat low and then trying to spin that ball up, it's trying to get the bat high and drive through it taking the ball early and trying to take some of the spin off the shot actually because one of the things that I have sort of learned recently is that as good as a, a heavy spin shot is, a faster flat shot is, is equally as effective. I think what you can also see here is that I'm keeping the, the stroke relatively short and simple. Trying to keep the bat up, trying to keep the back swing short, good snap of acceleration through it, taking the ball early. So it, it's all like a, a very simple motion, but it's given me plenty of time. So you can see here that Phil is being actually quite aggressive with his return, and yet I've got plenty of time to actually hit it. So this next drill is a uh, forehand push, followed by forehand open up down the line and then driving the ball after that. It's quite a, quite a tricky combo this one uh, and it's something that I think a lot of people struggle with and you can see here that I'm a little bit erratic with it. You've got to transition from dropping the bat down and then lifting up the backspin ball to keeping your bat high and driving through the following topspin. So two very different motions. Uh, I think it's something that when you when you practice it a lot over time, you do uh, naturally get yourself ready for that because you kind of you know that once you've lifted the first backspin ball, the next ball has to be topspin unless you're playing against a chopper. But it is still difficult to adjust to do that um, and to do it quickly, especially if you've done a very good open up where there's a lot of spin and then the ball is coming back at you with a lot of spin and it kind of sticks up a little bit. I think the, the main thing that I'm trying to work on is once I've done the open up, the next ball I've got to try and take it early and drive straight through it. Uh, like I've said in a few of my other videos, and you can still see it here, that I'm, I'm letting that ball drop a little bit a little bit down from its you know peak bounce. And as soon as the ball drops from peak bounce, you've then got to lift it back up again to get it up and over the net. But if it's got topspin on it, you can lift it off the end of the table. So that's just the, the one thing that I'm trying to work on. I don't quite do it perfectly, but uh, it's getting there. 
This next drill is almost a kind of like a mirror image of the, the drill that I've just done on my forehand. So it's going to be a backhand push, backhand open and then drive. The idea really is to drop the bat down and lift up the backspin ball and then drive through the next ball, taking it a little bit earlier, keeping the bat nice and high. I think the only problem that I have with my backhand at times is that my timing point is a little bit all over the place. Uh, I always feel, because I'm so comfortable with my forehand, that I just have this natural instinct to wait for the ball. Even if I'm playing in a match and I'm quite, you know, I don't know, I'm quite, you know, even if it's quite a, an intense part of the match, um, you know, and I'm perhaps a little bit nervous, I still find that the timing point is good and I can just wait for the ball and accelerate through at the right time. I seem to find with my backhand that it's, it's a little bit all over the place and tends to get a little bit too early, if anything. So I start to, um, especially if the ball's coming at me quickly. Um, so this is what you can see here. We've kind of changed the drill a little bit now where I'm pushing and Phil's opening. And I've got to just wait for the ball to come through and then attack it. And then even if the ball is coming at me quickly, I've got to have like a slight pause. So I must hit, get into my ready position, pause, then go. Ready position, go. And again, it's just to stop myself just acting too quickly, being too impulsive, and that timing point getting a bit too erratic. So back to one of the areas that I've spent a lot of time working on recently and still needs a lot more work is foreign flick. Uh, I do know that this is a, this is a shot that is not easy for you know like a, a lot of intermediate level players, uh, and I think even at the the very top levels, you know you see certain players, uh, you know somebody like Fan Zandong is a great example where he will use backhand flick almost exclusively on every single short serve. Forehand flick is not something that you see quite as often. So you can see here that I'm you know I'm working on it. It's, it's still a little bit erratic. It's definitely something that I'm finding in matches that I'm, I'm starting to get the instinct to play it, but it's still technically a long way from being good. Uh, you can see here that uh, I'm putting quite a few of them in the net, which is not... Um, it, it's a, it, it can happen quite a lot with Phil because he's, he does actually put an awful lot of backspin on his serves, so um, they're not easy to flick at all. But what I'm trying to do here is uh, step in nicely, uh, foot almost under the table, head low and close to the ball uh, then obviously no backswing really and then just like a little flip through the interesting take that phil has on this shot is as opposed to trying to put a little bit of topspin on the flick um it's almost it's kind of like a, it's almost flicking the ball back but rather than like adding topspin to the flick you're almost guiding the ball back a little bit so you're obviously taking some of the, the backspin off the shot that they're giving you, but not taking it all off. It's almost going back relatively flat. And it, it, it's surprising how difficult it makes the return. Um, he, he, he was doing this to me just to show me exactly what he meant. And when he flicked it at me with very little spin, I was really, really struggling to return it, especially when I wasn't expecting it. If he flicks it at me with some topspin, then the topspin almost uh, like kind of guided my return back over the net. And it's a, it's a really, really kind of like interesting perspective to have on the shot. Um, and it's, it's kind of given me like an appreciation that, you know, putting a lot of spin on a shot is not always the best way to do it. And that it's incredibly effective to take spin off the ball. So this next drill is quite a nice uh, traditional backhand to forehand transition drill. Again, going back to like a, a lot of the usual things that I've said before, trying to keep the bat nice and high, trying to just make sure that I take the ball early and drive through it rather than letting the ball drop and spinning it up. Uh, trying to focus on my footwork as well. Uh, this is something that I'm, I'm really gonna, gonna put some emphasis on over the next few months certainly over the summer is I get a little bit sluggish with my footwork um, I have a little bit of tendency I kind of plant my feet and then don't really move as I'm playing the shot one of the things that I want to develop and work on uh, which is physically quite difficult to do 
um, but it, it's almost where you have like the little um, the little hop as you play the shot. You see a lot of the top players doing it, so they'll get the feet in position, then they'll almost jump a little bit as they play the shot, and then they'll move to the next shot. So that's something that I'm really going to work on. But again, here you can see so again it was almost a little bit exaggerated is that on the follow through from the shot is that I keep the bat high so follow through and into a ready position play the next shot back into a ready position almost trying to not let the bat drop below the level of the table so this was quite an interesting drill uh, one that I've not really worked on before which is, I can best describe it as an aggressive backhand drive. It's not a, really a backhand open up. Um, it's not like the, sort of like the standard drive shot. Yeah, it's like a very, very aggressive, well, almost like a, like a long flick, if you like. You can see here really what I'm trying to do is I'm stepping in, I've got my elbow forward and using that as a hinge point. So elbows forward and then really whipping my arms uh, through the shot. This is something that I was quite excited by actually when we started doing it because of course my forehand is by far the strongest shot. Uh, I've got really good variation, really good speed on it. Backhand don't tend to really do an awful lot with it. And this kind of showed me that I can actually do something with it. So this is something that it'll take a long, long time for me to be able to get this in but I'm sure that it's something that if I can develop and uh, get confident with it, um, it would add a new dimension to my game. This drill is a follow-on from the previous one. Um, trying to add in a, what is quite an aggressive backhand push, something that I don't work on enough, something I don't do enough. Um, so we're just trying to put this into place to push aggressively, and then once Phil opens up, to then really like aggressively counter that with my backhand. This is something that I'm, I'm getting much, much better at with my forehand, but uh, backhand still tends to be a, a more passive block so I think this was a you know, really good exercise for me to just try and be a little bit more aggressive on the uh, on the backhand side when someone is attacking me. Uh, I'm finding it, it, it's becoming a lot more relevant to me as well as the level of player goes up the more likely that I'm going to face somebody who is going to try and open up and attack me. Um, obviously I'm the, the type of player that wants to try and get in first uh, and try and attack somebody. I'm not particularly comfortable if I'm defending, but uh, again, as the level of play goes up, it's almost impossible for me to just always be attacking first. Sometimes that I've got to uh, attack and attack. So this is um, really, really good for me on the backhand side. Um, so like I say, so it feels opening up aggressively and then I'm trying to then be equally as aggressive back. Um, I'm just trying to get it in that far corner.
One of the things that Phil's trying to emphasise to me here is that when somebody attacks you, to not be too frightened of it. Uh, I know that sounds like a little bit daft, but sometimes when someone uh, attacks you aggressively, you, you almost naturally want to sort of step back or stand up out of your posture. So you've got to try and st like stay with it. Um, so stay with your, your weight forward. Don't be too startled if somebody does attack you. Just accept that that's what's going to happen and you're going to deal with that situation and you're going to counter-attack it. Okay guys, so that's it. I uh, hope that you found this video interesting. hope that you found it quite useful for yourselves too. It's given you a good insight into some of the things that I'm working on, some of the things that I'm thinking about to try and improve my game. And hopefully the drills that we've done here will be something that you can try yourself and help you to improve. If there's anything else that you'd like to see in some future videos, let me know. Cheers guys.